So at this point, the operator's got a good high level overview of what's happened with this scenario, including those extra bits of context that Netcall Operations Insight has provided. But what they want to do now is try and come to some kind of resolution and potentially do a little bit more investigation. So what they can do now is they can click that investigate button that we can see on the event viewer. And they'll be launched into the incident user interface. In this view, the operator is still looking at the same incident, but they have just a little bit more detail than they had in the event viewer. And they can start to drill down into some of those bits of context that Netcall Operations Insight has been able to provide for them. The first thing our operator does on this screen is heads over to the right hand side to find out a little bit more information about the reasons why these events were contributed into this incident. First, they go to this temporal grouping column and see that these two events here were contributed due to temporal grouping. Now, this is the similar information that we had on the event viewer, but what they can do now is they can click on that group to find out a little bit more information about the reasons why the system came to the decision it did. Within this panel that's just appeared, the operator is presented with some high level information about the temporal group they've selected. So firstly, towards the top of the panel, you can see that they are given information around when was the first group instance, how many instances there have been, and what the average duration is. Working down the panel, they can also see a high level overview of the different times this occurred in this calendar heat map. And most importantly, they're also got available to them information about if an operator in the past has already approved this. And what that means is that operator has seen this information and they validate it that they believe the result that's come back from the system. And you can get information about who that operator was, if they left a comment about this group, uh, and also when that comment was left. If the operator wants to see some more detailed information about this temporal group, they can click the more info button. On this screen, we give the operator all the tools they need in order to investigate exactly what happened every time these two events have occurred. Along the top of the page, we can see a distribution of all the different group instances across time. And the operator can use this to navigate to exactly the timestamps that they're interested in. Just below this, we have some examples of what the events tend to look like, the two events being in this group. And further down the screen, we can then start to see the individual group instances and the events as they occurred each time they participated in those groups. And alongside that, we've got access to all of the different event columns so the operator can really understand exactly what happened each time. The operator is now confident that the system has made the right choice and these two events are indeed related. So they now head back over to the incident detail page to continue their investigation. The operator now heads back to that grouping section we were looking at earlier, but this time wants to know why those other events were contributing to this incident. Like they saw in the event viewer, these events here were contributed due to scope-based grouping. They can now click on these tags to find out a little bit more information about this grouping mechanism. And what they find is that these have all been grouped because they share the same front-end service resource. They can also find out how many events are in the group, how long the group has occurred for, and using this slider, they can slide through time to see when the individual events in this group occurred in this particular case.